Welcome to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. On this week's show, we'll talk with North Jersey Congressman Josh Godheimer, who is just out of quarantine. He talks about what he's doing for his constituents who are in a hot spot for the coronavirus. We'll take you to a North Brunswick mattress factory to tell you how they are now helping fight the coronavirus. And we'll talk with a psychologist who has tips for families who are now spending a lot more time together than they're used to. And now our interview with Democratic Congressman Josh Godheimer from the 5th Congressional District in North Jersey. Hey, Congressman, thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate it. Thanks for Where are you broadcasting? Where are you talking to us from right now? I'm in my office in uh, Wyckoff, New Jersey, where I'm spending about 20 hours a day, you know, talking to folks and, um, and trying to do everything we can from here. Yeah, and you've been quarantined, right? I was. It ended uh, on Friday, but I was quarantined. Um, I was uh, exposed to somebody who had the virus, and so we, we stayed in place and, uh, and, and worked uh, from here, and it, and it works. So we're trying our best. And you didn't show any symptoms. You're fine, right? I'm okay, thank God. Yeah, thank God. But as you know, too many people we know aren't right now. Especially in your district. It, it seems like in New York and in North Jersey and in your district, District 5, which goes along the top of the state with Bergen and Essex County, part of, part of those counties, you're, you're part of ground zero. What is your office doing? What are you doing right now for your constituents? You're right. We were one of the earliest uh, hotspots in the country. New Jersey, as you know, has second, uh, second highest uh, case count right now. Um, uh, unfortunately, a very high death count. We've, uh, and so a lot of families have been affected. Um, uh, in, in Bergen County, where it's the highest county in the state with case-wise, um, so many of our hospitals are, are, are really overwhelmed right now. So many people coming in. In fact, um, one thing I talk to the hospitals about pretty much every day, usually at 5.30, is their caseload and what they need. And what we've consistently heard for weeks now is more protective equipment, goggles, face masks. You know, you know uh, the story that it's not enough, especially for our frontline healthcare workers who are doing just incredible work. Um, and then also ventilators, and we were able to address that issue. The issue we're hearing most about now is, is simply just having enough staff to be able to take care of people. You know, a huge portion of uh, our frontline healthcare workers themselves um, uh, and our first responders are now sick. Um, so it's just a matter of having enough people, and we have more people coming in every single day. So I'm very focused on that. I spend the time on that issue. And then, of course, talking to people all day long and to our small businesses and businesses of all sizes. We've got um, uh, people working on tests. Uh, Beck and Dickinson's in the district trying to develop a rapid test. We've got FDA approval that's moving along. Um, and our small was on this morning with one of our small businesses trying to figure out how the legislation we passed last week, how he can get help for his small business and, and stay afloat because we've got to get to the other side of this and reopen the country. And we want to make sure we get there. There's an economy standing strong. In the coronavirus stimulus bill that, that the uh, Congress just passed and the president just signed, there, there is a lot of money available. And I'm certain that I know we're going to get checks, but... There's money available specifically for small businesses and other businesses. Are you able to help them get through the regulatory process to get that money? That's exactly what we're, we're doing. We're navigating. So we passed this uh, significant package, rescue package, a relief package. Uh, of course, resources to our hospitals, resources to our state, given how much the state is, uh, is putting out right now. Um, direct, as you point out, for unemployment insurance at the full, uh, for 13 weeks at the full amount of, uh, of a paycheck, which is critically important. And then for small businesses, as you said, there's, there's several kinds of aid. There are loans that, are, that will be forgiven if they keep people employed for our small businesses under 500. And then there are emergency orders up to $10,000 for people. Um, and this is aside, of course, from the direct checks people will be getting at home, depending upon their income. We're trying to navigate, you know, all these things are brand new. So the Small Business Administration is bringing them online. That's well, exactly what we're focused on, filling out how to get these forms filled out, how to apply for these dollars. I was on with a small business a few minutes ago doing exactly this, how do you make sure you apply and we get those resources. You know, what I'm concerned about is that delay and making sure people can get these dollars so they can stay afloat um, and get through this so that we can get to the other side strong. Yeah, there's another stimulus bill coming down the pipeline now. There's been some criticism saying, why don't we just wait to see what the last couple have done before we get before we spend some more money how's your what's your feeling on that 
Well, I think, of course, we need to look at this and just like we're deciding on our schools and, and, and pieces and looking at benchmarks, and we're going to have to make the same uh, decision on when we open the country. Um, but we should be at least talking about what needs to be in there. There's some things that I've heard from some of my small businesses that for, for either because of it was written, they may not qualify. So I think we have to address and correct some of these, some of these issues. And then there's the question of you do uh, readdress salt, which I'm for, of course, uh, eliminating the, the the deduction, the way they put the cap on the salt deduction, and seeing if we can get some help there for our state in particular. Right, it'd be great to get a tax tax relief that way and get a tax cut if we eliminate the cap on salt. There's talk about infrastructure, which, as you know, is significantly important in our district. But it's the gateway project of just all of our crumbling roads and bridges. Um, but I think you are right that we have to get it ready and do our job, which is as members of Congress to prepare and then ass keep assessing the situation and seeing what we need. Um, this is having a huge impact on the economy and in a lot of our workers, whether they're an hourly worker or a salary, of course, a business, we've got to be thinking about that. The president brought up uh, this week that the stimulus part four should have infrastructure in it. You just brought it up too. make the argument for that when we're in a coronavirus crisis. Well, I think it's the other side of this. What a lot of economists that I'm speaking to are, are saying to me is we can get through this part. We don't know exactly how devastating it's going to be to the economy long term. How many jobs won't come back? How many businesses will have to shut down either because they can't even afford to stay open and take advantage of certain of the certain programs that are in place? Um, and then you'll have a lot of displaced workers The you'll the, you'll want some sort of stimulus to the economy when it opens back up. Of course, if we can get these jobs out there and hire people to build our bridges, build our tunnels, deal with some of our infrastructure, um, our rural broadband, other issues of that nature, which we need anyway, that would be a great, uh, right, that'd be a great uh, boost to the economy and, and get things moving. And again, as the president said too, these are things that we need to do anyway, like the gateway tunnel, right? These are things that are there and it would be a great way to come out of this and we're gonna need to give a serious shock to the economy on the other side. You know, it seems like we're in the middle of a election year and everybody's supposed to be campaigning. It seems to me that the public and the politicians have forgotten completely about that. You're up for re-election. How have you been dealing with that? I mean, candidly, uh, I've been focusing 24-7 on governing, which I think what we should all be doing right now. There'll be plenty of time for politics later, but what I really think we need to do as a country is, is, is continue to stick together, Democrats and Republicans. That's how we got the first three packages done, those emergency packages, in a bipartisan way. You know, Congress doesn't usually work that fast, and we were able to for the country. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll get to politics later. For now, we just got to stay focused, got to stay focused on getting people healthy, uh, making sure that our economy stays healthy and our jobs are there. Uh, that should be our focus. Uh, and Aside for a call here and there, uh, you know, I, I really believe that we should all be as, as elected officials focused on uh, getting things done for people and, helping, and again, keeping people healthy and safe. If this stretches longer than we had hoped, should election day be pushed back? Well, there's certain constitutional issues about that, so I'll leave that to the scholars. Um, but I believe that we're going to have to think differently about how we approach what the primary that's coming up, of course, in June. And, and, and I'm hoping we'll be out of the woods by November. But if we're not, we just have to think about it differently. So we've, we'll get through that part of it. I'm not worried about that. It'll just have to, we'll have to think differently about how we approach it, just like we're doing now about our work. Um, the key is people, is that the country stays united and focused on getting people healthy and safe and making sure that our economy is strong when we come out and there's jobs there and our businesses are there. I'm very worried about the economic side of this. And um, uh, in addition to, of course, people staying healthy and and we should all focus on that. That was Josh Godheimer, Democratic congressman in New Jersey's 5th Congressional District, which is in the far north of New Jersey. When we come back, we'll talk with a man who is used to dealing with a crisis. Bob Martin was the commissioner of environmental protection under Chris Christie. That interview, When Jersey Matters, continues. <laughs>